this lecture, we are going to see how caching works in Snowflake. We'll see how data processing happens in Snowflake and we'll also see how the each layer in Snowflake architecture interact with each other. And then we'll finally see the caching use case. In this lecture, we'll focus only one use case. There are several use cases associated with caching in Snowflake. In this lecture, we'll focus on only one and that is nothing but how caching works when you submit same query multiple times. Okay, so before we start learning about the caching concept, make sure you have the basic understanding of Snowflake architecture and also at least some basic understanding about the Snowflake execution plan. This is the Snowflake architecture. It has three main layers. The very first layer is database storage. The second layer is compute layer and third layer is cloud services. The database storage layer stores the data in persistent state. This is specifically used for the storing business data. Then we have the compute layer where the data processing happens or the query execution happens. On other hand, in cloud services layer, Snowflake provides various cloud services and those are infrastructure manager, query optimizer, metadata manager and security. So whenever we first submit the query, we actually submit again the cloud services and then it flows. So this is the basic architecture of Snowflake. Now where the actual disk present or where the uh, data is stored. So in the data storage layer for each of this database instance we will have the physical disk which will store the data. At the compute layer as well, we will have the physical disk. So what is the purpose of the compute layer disk, right? So we store the business data at the storage layer, then why we need the disk at the compute layer? This compute layer disk is used to store the temporary data, which will be used for the caching. Now we understood where are the disk present. So what it mean for architecture or for the caching concept. So in the caching concept, we use the terms local disk or remote disk. Local disk is used to refer the physical disk which is present at the compute layer. So compute layer will, ha will have the disk, it is called as a local disk and the storage level disk is called as a remote disk. So when we see the statistics about local disk or local IO and remote disk or remote IO, those are nothing but the compute layer level disk and the storage level disk respectively. Now we understand what is local disk, what is remote disk. Now let's understand where are the caching areas present. Very first caching area present in the cloud services layer. So when we get the result for our query, that data get cached in the cloud services layer as well. So whenever the next time the request comes, it will use either the caching from the cloud services or the caching area which is also present at the compute layer. So there are two opportunity or two levels where the caching happens. One is in the cloud services layer and the second in the compute layer. When you execute any query, it has a two option to use the cache. It can use from the cloud services layer or it can use from the compute layer. We are going to see when we execute our query in this lecture, whether it is going to use from the cloud services layer or from the compute layer. Now let's understand the query flow. In our scenario, we'll execute the query, which will first hit the cloud services layer then the query optimizer will come to the picture and will optimize the SQL query if needed. The optimized query will be executed against the compute layer. The compute layer will work on that SQL query or process that and at, during the processing it will connect to the, the database storage layer and it will fetch the data. Once it is fetched the data it will do some more processing and it will return back to the cloud services layer. And when we say the cloud services layer, we are going to see that data in our Snowflake result sheet. So this is the whole flow of execution. We submit the query to cloud services, compute layer process the request and it returns back to the 
cloud services. Now we understood the theory. Let's have the demo on this. In order to demonstrate how caching works, we'll create our own custom warehouse. We, the default, it also provide one warehouse called compute warehouse. We are not going to use that, rather we'll create a new one. What I'm going to do is we'll set some auto suspend. Okay, so there are various properties we need to set for the warehouse. One is what is the size of warehouse. We'll create the small warehouse because it's less expensive. Then auto suspend. So when we execute query, the warehouse will become active and it will remain active for whatever the time specified here. I'm specifying 300 seconds, that is five minutes. And then I will also mention auto resume. Auto resume is true, that means once the warehouse go in the suspended state and after that if you execute the query it will resume it will become active again then we are setting the initial state of the warehouse i am setting it as a true the suspend state so that means once i create the warehouse its its state will be suspended now i have this query let's go ahead and execute it to create the warehouse Warehouse is successfully created and automatically here I can see my current warehouse that is VW example 1 got selected and its a state is grayed out that means it is suspended state. If you really want to confirm that then you have to just click this and you will see the status is suspended. Okay. now. My query has not executed yet, means I created warehouse, but now I would like to query the table. In order to demonstrate the query or execution, I'm going to use Snowflake sample data as a database instance. And under that, I'm going to use a schema called TPCH SF1000. You can use any one of the sample schema and under that I'm going to use query against customer table. This customer table contains a data of size 10 GB. So that means it's a pretty big table and it will take quite good time to process our query. So that we'll see how caching works and all that. Now let's go ahead and execute the query. Before that I'm making sure I selected the correct user. My warehouse is VM example 1. It is suspended state. We'll see when you execute this query what will be the state of this warehouse. Then my schema name, sorry, then my database name and the schema name. So let's go ahead and execute a select start from customer and run the command. So the query is running. So let's go to this open history. Now you can see the first thing, the warehouse is in green state. That means it is in on or active state. Then we'll go ahead and see the execution plan. In order to go to the execution plan, we'll see this query ID, click on that. Here it is showing the details. What is the current status, username, virtual machine or the warehouse. Then we have the start time total duration so far and how many bytes are scanned around 18% of the bytes are scanned and the number of rows right now it's a 27 million let's go ahead and profile here the actual execution plan will be shown as we can see in my execution plan there are two nodes one is table scan node which took around 22.9% of the processing and the result node. Result, result node is taking more processing time, that is 48%. This is very simple execution plan, but if the plan is very complicated, in that case you can see the most expensive nodes here by selecting this expensive node option. Right now there are two nodes only, so one is table scan and the other one result one. 
you can ma maximize also if you want to see a little bigger picture and it will also highlight whatever the currently executing node so right now it is executing the result uh, node the table scan node is completed on the right hand side of the screen you can see there are two sections one is total execution time and the other is total statistic in the total execution you can see the processing happening is 54 percent now here you can see the local disk io is zero percent remote disk io is 17 percent remote disk io here is nothing but the compute layer is trying to connect and fetch the data from the database layer and that's the remote disk is getting uh, in process let me refresh it it is now 13 percent initialization normal takes longer time so that is 30 percent of time it is taking at the bottom screen total statistic you see the scan processing is 84 84 percent here byte scan is 9.29 gb almost it's close going to finish shortly and then it is byte return to result is 7.2 gb important thing here to notice percentage scan from cache is zero percent so so far the cache is not getting used so everything is directly connected to the database and it is showing on the result page so total partitions are 667 and currently got scan 562 let me do refresh one more time this time query got successfully finished i can see the status here it is finished now when i see this query result i can see the most of the time the remote disk io is getting used so that means only data is getting fetched from the database that is nothing read from the local disk i can also see the statistic processing completed 100 percent and the cache use is zero so this is a basic thing so when you execute very very first time it connected to the the database layer and processes that data and return back to the result so let's see the result set so i'm going to this worksheet and i can see the result is getting displayed here let's learn some more statics about this processing here i can see the status of the query that's green means execution is successfully completed it has a duration 2 minutes 34 seconds it has start and end time it has query id the number of rows byte scan and the important thing is cluster so when we pay to snowflake it is based on how much the compute layer you are using so if you use more compute layer or more computing power points then you have to pay accordingly that means when you are when I executed select star from customer at that time one cluster is getting used and that means we need to pay for those snowflake uh, credit points when you use cache at that time it will not use computing power so that means when you execute when I execute again the same query it will not use the computing power so that means I do not have to pay for that the next caching or next execution but it has to fall in the caching area means or in the caching period hence this parameter which we said like auto suspend and auto resume they are very important we when you create warehouse we have to set this optimum value because when you execute the query and it falls outside the the auto suspend time then it will go and connect to the database and cache it again we'll see that use case in detail in our next lecture now but how can we confirm whether uh, when i execute this next query whether it will use the cache or it will again connect to the database so that means if you go to this execution plan if i see the remote disk io equal to zero percent that will conclude that it is not connecting to the database layer rather it is going to use the cache so we know to demonstrate it let's go ahead and execute this query i'll select the query and one more thing 
Right now, the warehouse is in running state. What we'll do, we'll make it suspended state and we'll see what happens when you execute this query. I'll go to the warehouse. Now this virtual warehouse, it's in started state. Let me suspend it. Now this is in suspend state. If I execute this query, this suspended state virtual warehouse, if it is goes in green state, that means it will use the compute layer. If it remains in the gray state, that means in suspended state, that it will tell me that it is not using the compute layer. So let me go ahead and execute it. We'll monitor what is the status of the this warehouse. Now the result got returned and the status of the warehouse was never went into the green. It remained in the suspended state. That means when we execute the query, it that request never went to the compute layer. The compute layer was not used. Even that I can see here. This query finished in 40 millis millisecond. It will have the query ID, it will go shortly there. But see here, the cluster used is empty or zero. That means when we execute the query again on Snowflake within the auto suspend time frame, it will not use cluster. So that means when I execute this query second time, for that execution, I do not have to pay to Snowflake. Apart from this cluster usage, I can see nothing is read, means number of rows read are zero, number of bytes scanned are zero. This stats is coming from the database storage layer. That means it is never connected to the database as well. If I open this query ID, it shows me only one node and that is nothing but query result. This tells me that if I select this, there is no stats getting captured here. That means all the results are coming from our cloud service layer. If you remember, we have two caching areas. One is cloud service caching area and other is compute layer caching area. As request never went to compute layer, that means it used the cache from the cloud services area. So as we can see in this execution, when we execute query multiple times, it uses the cache from the cloud services area. Then when the cache from the compute layer will be used, that we are going to see in our next lecture.